And having a look at their utility, they've got no HEs or incendiaries, but they do have bullets and they do have silent arms. Sun Pius goes in, connects the first one. He has been traded out though. May just needs to survive. This gives them a linchpin to play off, but Nickelback has thwarted all of that. They're going straight on for the defuse though. Snappy sticking it and no one can force him off. I see. Does eventually find the head and it's all on Madden to get the job done. Nine HP, Vince, time's ticking. Even if he baits them back in, it looks like Amcow have got a firm grasp on the round and it's ice that shuts it down with two. Using some of that utility to zone out the aggressive angles as well. A lot of deagles and also one MP9 in the hands of Snappy Vince. Up close, this could really be the meat grinder that bites its way through them and Forrester falls. That puts Crowd into a bit of an awkward position now, stuck behind the crane and the smoke. And Burrus, we know what these people are doing with that D, but Crowd is going to deny it this time. I can just back away. So much action has happened in such a short period of time. There's still over a minute on the clock. So, I mean, I'm calling into any kind of forced, uncomfortable position as it stands. No, you can always cut noise, reset the round. It's exactly what they're doing, at least towards ramp early. You've still got so much utility as well. The smokes, the flashbangs, the play off the back of each other. And they do prime the smokes. They're going to bloom those on towards the site. So, Pyre's playing on the lip of it. Madden would have first contact. He's got a good angle, at least, with the added height to work with, and it's going to throw off the crosshairs. Needs to hit the headshot, though. At least peppers the first player, and Spires can trade onto it. But I see response. We're down to the 3v3. Nice. He's got a second one as well, and a third kill in quick succession on the side of Amcal. The Whoa. HE, though, will deny the bomb plant, and it gives Majisk an opportunity, a chance here. He's also healthy. Full HP, and an Galil's been picked up. A winnable round for the Dane. You can hear the bomb being planted down now. Was hoping maybe for a, a fake in the dying embers of this round, but that's not the case. First player is going to go in, and he's down to 9 HP, but if he can land that quick-fire headshot, maybe there's a way forward for Magisk here. Smoke up and over, going to try and draw away the attention of Travis, who pops up, oh. and Magisk puts him down. A solid 1v2 clutch at the very beginning of this best of three. You think about for this man alone, Vince. The times he's walked into the major arena, the times he's been there himself, knowing losing this game. Uh, Boros is trying to right his way back into this round as Amcal have bypassed the smokes and the flashes, but Travis in the meanwhile, opposite side of Major SM4, Madden is going to keep the dream alive and actually puts them into an advantageous position. But Krad, he's flanking, he's working. Snappy spots him, but not quick enough on the draw. And Sun Pius may have the bomb down under control, but both players pretty healthy at this point. The M4 should triumph over the Galil, but Sun Pius is playing a dangerous game here of cat and mouse behind the sights. And now it's going to be down to Krad to try and push in. Spray comes out, but Sun Pius shuts him down. Such an important round again. Two clutches back to back for Falcons. Fine. Mainly as a lurk. Allows him to trade up from the Galil to the AK. There's just no easy path forwards towards the site. Additionally, Sun Pius, Boris are both here in separate angles. They have a mid-rotational player in the form of Madden that can quickly switch back around. But Boris has been plucked out from Krad. 30 seconds left. Amcal still in this round. 25 seconds. Krad. Taking space, and Pius wants to peek in. Shoulders seen, Krad strikes and finds the first. Doubles up as well, Vince. The entries are allowing them a path into the bomb site, and Majisk on the rotate doesn't expect Icy. He grabs it. And, it. and Forrester, who's always a pain in the backside, he's also quite an entry focused player. And speak of the man, and he will deliver. Molly's now being tossed to the back of the site, and Krad's picked up another one. Surely not again, Falcons. The duo of Amcal delivering once more. Madden, though, is going to be able to pick this up, piece together around and support Snappy on this retake. 30 seconds, both of them group up together. Last of the utility is used. Smoke round the corner. Icy waiting for the push, but straight through the smoke, Forrester finds it. The scalpel makes an incision, and the CTs realize this one's gone. You've got to give it up. Falcons will lose out on the round, and Amcal equalize with three of their own. That was a 5v3. The last two rounds have been a 2v4 loss and a 5v3 loss for Falcons. I mean, how can you justify that? This is the team that needs to be winning these rounds. I mean, if you want a chance of making the major and going far in the major, 
No disrespect to Amcal at all, but these are the kind of rosters that Falcons has to beat and beat comprehensively. You can't be losing rounds like this consistently. Terrorists. Painful as well, because like you say, what's the response? Two players, one from either team over towards the B-bomb site. Actually, Boros has got a bit of backup, playing the off angle towards the back pillar, but just in position with him. And they're going to test this hold, Vince. Oh, they're going to be uh, interested to dip their toe in the pool and see what the temperature's looking like. And Travis is happy, takes the kill, can back away if needs be. There's still 50 seconds on the clock. They find themselves a player behind, but they've been in these situations already twice and delivered. Madden joining alongside Boros. Molly's not extending far enough to deal with these positions. And now Travis and the rest of Amcal are about to just push straight in, but there's Boros with a double spray. And that is exactly why he is such a tantalizing prospect in this roster. Mechanically speaking, he is extremely solid. Yeah, solid shot from St. Pius. It just forces the tees back a little bit. They could have forced them off into the angles. They could have tried to push up ramp and just swarmed over the CTs and swell the site, but instead it's snappy. They get stabbed. I don't think he realizes a player in the smoke just behind him right now. And Travis with the Glock could get the drop onto Sun Pius. Nails him. And now puts Snappy in a bit of an awkward position. He does have some comeback as well with Madden, but they've both gone down to the Glocks. A 2-1-2 two -two now takes shape. If Falcons lose this round, it's going to be so devastating. Travis has got himself the orb as well from the corpse of some pious Vince. Oh, he's looking towards the back of the site. The nade comes flying in and it does blow him away. All of the pressure now falls onto Crad. He's tiptoeing his way up towards the site, but he's being flanked. There's a man in the rear. Boros slowly taking his time as he starts to flank up and finds the freebie. The headshot onto Crad. A kill that closes it. Either way, He'll be hoping that Magus and Sun Pies can dig him out of this ditch. I mean, effectively, this is a two and a half versus a four at this stage. Not that Amcal will necessarily know that. Snappy's unable to get across to a weapon either. They're out of range for him. Sun Pies, though, connects the first shot. Snappy can maybe play a little bit of bait here and try and draw out some fire. Hiding in the smoke between two players, but Forrest has found him. And our son Pius on the wrong side of the smoke just has to back away with 15 seconds. This bomb is looking to get planted down a slight gap in that smoke. And Sun Pius makes the most of it. But the plant has come through. Sun Pius is controlling the retake single-handedly, but he's got backup. Majisk has already won a single clutch from this position. And he thrusts it into a 1v2 all on Forrest. As Sun Pius does it all on his own. It doesn't matter they don't have guns to work with to back him up. The AWP will slay them, and Amcal. Oh, he's got all the info in the world. Positionally, he could completely cauterize this rotation with a single slice. Chops his way through one. Snappy gets the backstab onto Nickelback. Now they have to run round towards the B-bomb site and look to defend against the last two members of Amcal. Yeah, just was playing anti-flash. And this should be a quarter. They line up and Snappy actually gets a team kill, but doesn't really matter. Eight for the score coming through to that second half. Four rounds on the bounce for Falcons. And if there was... Krad's playing for info. He gets just that. Falcons clearing out the sandbags, making a ton of noise as they set themselves up for the play towards the A side. Backups arrived and it's icy with the doolies. Crab behind the smoke though. Oh, the time he turns around just as Sun Pius pushes. And that was maybe the ace up the sleeve that they had. And instead it's gone and turned into a joker and now Forrester is getting peppered through the smoke and finalized. Not only the Falcons win the round, they don't lose a single player. Man, it looks like Hamkal are tripping over themselves. Some great utility from Falcons. Now Icy and Forrester though is gonna step up and deliver with two kills at great cost to Icy's health, but still in the fight. Molly tossed to heaven. He's going to land on the headshot boxes instead and forces away plays. They would have heard a couple of tickles off that Molotov, but still a minute left on the clock, and they do have control from the back as well, so they don't have to fully commit to this site. And the Sun Pi is just making sure these angles are covered off before he goes in for the plant. 
One of the edges they had, though, was the offensive utility. They had a HE and a Molotov on the Jisk. He's thrown both of them out towards CT side. And only did about 20 damage between both. Now they can edge their way back in. They're trying to take the site control as they're creeping their way towards the players. First man's going to fall. Majisk with a double up, and it's all on Crash. Famous in hand. Finds one. Time's ticking, though. It's not looking good. The overall round itself really slipping away from him now. They had a small chance to get this one, but it's gone. It was just a slightly ajar window that they were trying to exploit and make a move through, but it was quickly closed. And the Falcons picking up pace as Magus goes down with the ship. He'll be fine with that one. They have tons of cash. Even if they can make this like a 12 8 sort of scoreline, 13 8, I should say, there's still at least something to be excited about. There's something to be a bit optimistic about, and maybe. Maybe we're selling them short right now, but Sun Pies cuts the life of Icy short with the AWP. And in doing so, Ramp now becomes that little bit more tentative for Amcal. They have to tread lightly. And with the tiny amount of space created, Madden has taken a mile of map control off of Amcal. And you thought maybe that would be the play to sell them down the river. Instead, though, Forrester trades it back. Does get the advantage now. Four versus three. Minute on the clock to play with. And it's still some Pius that's finding all of these big impact moments for Falcons. He's been such a great entry tool on the T and CT side with this orb. But will they be able to make their move into the site? Again, he delivers. It allows Boris to slowly sneak his way up. He's also on 16 frags, by the way, but misses the spray. The way he's been playing, you'd expect that to connect, but he would have called a lot of damage was done. They may not anticipate the double stack on side, and that will cost Sun Pai his life. So, Nickelback and Amcal winning those last two rounds. And that means a lot more pressure on their Orpa, on Icy. A round like this, he needs to thrive. Nickelback takes all of the fight. He tries to deal damage. The trades aren't looking good for them, though. Two picks back in favor of Falcons, and they're running up the ramp. It should still be an Amcal round, but that is, that's sloppy trading. As you said, doesn't look good at all on that approach. You're expecting each of those rifles, realistically, to get two kills each. They should be in a position where if, it, if you do get traded back, it's like a 3v1, and it's almost untenable at that stage. As it stands, though, because that was so fast, minute left on the clock, they have control of the bomb, they've now traded up to two rifles instead, and although they don't have Kevlar on these players, you always know when you have a Sun Pies Magisk on the server, they're going to be quick with it when it comes to hitting those headshots. This has suddenly gone into a very scary round for Amcal. That A1S on the T side. Oh, it could cause issues, especially for Travis. Didn't expect them to walk their way out middle. A round where Falcons had nothing to their name, but they're making it work, piecing together the final round that they needed off the back of the broken round. And for Crad, it's all on him to clutch it, finds the head of Majisk. He's baited round the corner, and isn't it fitting? It's Sun Pius with a stolen up to close it. He was the... And it all rides on surviving this map. We're into it. Falcons on the T side. They mount a play towards the A site. Forrester fires off the warning shots, and Nickelback holds towards Donut. All right, idea just slightly off on the timing. Well, Forrest has bagged himself one. He will fall prey to Magisk's Glock, and the post plant has Ooh. already been put down. Those jewelies, though, devastating damage. And in doing so, Snappy now does have the backstab, but he's missed his opportunity. It's looking good for Amcal to pick up this pistol round. They're going for the defuse, the full 10 second. There's nothing Snappy can do about it. Just has to sit there and hope he can get some exit frags. Even if he picks up the kills at the end, it doesn't really matter. The opening pistol round was the big piece of the puzzle, and it's only a few... The bulk of Falcons now moving up mid, but with 23 seconds left. They've decided that A is the site they want to try and aggress on to. Man is going to get pushed in. Nickelback takes him. Forrester at the back of Temple, though. is putting down the pain with the M4. There's another one. Ten seconds to play with the Mage's caught between multiple angles. Amcal have weathered the storm, and they do it pretty comfortably in the end. They only lose one player. Ooh. From that boost. Near miss, but no success. The contact walk out towards A. At least works off the back of the trade. St. Pius finds one with a Glock, striking down onto Nickelback. Two players rotating towards Red Room as well. 
And the T's have got a few off angles to work with here, Vince. It's a retake against a very low Falcons team, sure. But if they play some cheeky positions, they could still do a lot of damage and maybe find this one. Start that Deagle and two rifles in play. Half of that fuse is now ticked by. Only a third or so remains. And although two players in Donut, they can go for a wide swing here. Crad going for the defuse. Oh, I think he's got the full defuse here. I don't think he can stop this one. Even a team kill thrown in the mix. It was unfortunate. It was uncomfortable. But considering the encounters, the early burst out towards middle, the smoke shots, some pious sleeping at the wheel with a ramp push. A lot of tiny details. Crad could be caught sleeping here, though. Nade in the hands. So Snappy finds the frag. Travis, you've really got to put the foot down. He's got back up, but if he peeks, some pious should be ready for it. Again, though, he inflicts some damage. He's burning. He's trying to get out of the Molotovs that are spreading all over the place. Meanwhile, Nickelback chimes in with two massive frags and looks for a little bit more. The bomb's dropped on the ramps and Pius is scoped in, but he gets swung upon and the round is being ripped away from Falcons. Mm, some Pius from hero to zero from the last map to this one. Missing so many shots that could have put this round in an entirely different park altogether. Getting to boost up in that smoke. I don't think May just realizes, but it's more designated towards the catwalk. This could prove to be more of a detriment than a blessing. This leaning tower of CTs, head to head through the smoke, and there is the spray. Boros knows it. He's playing patiently, but it's not going to be a virtue this time around. An icy will nail Snappy with the AWP. Everything beginning to shape up nicely on the side of the CTs. Amcal looking like a different outfit from that Vertigo performance. And although there's a casualty, it still reads 5-0 in favor of Amcal. There is a buy-in, but it's a half buy. It does allow the McGlill and full Deagles with a MAC-10. We saw this have a lot of success on Vertigo, however. And Madden, oh, he tried so desperately to beat that Molotov, but double nades and Forrester behind him. But they have cracked open the site over on A, and they're spilling up to try and get a post-plant. They claimed it as Falcon's territory. But Nickelback, he doesn't like this arrangement. He wants the clap back. Spamming through the donut, Forrester pushing up. He runs into the crosshair of the in-game leader for Falcons. The Galil strikes him down. They peek into him one by one, though, and he's finding opportunities to punish. They need to mount this retake cleanly. Flashed in by his teammate, peeks off the back of it, Snappy. He's single-handedly piecing this one together, Vince. He's put the team on his back in this round and is proving that it's not just about his brains, it's Brawn too. but the AWP claps back. Time ticking. They jump on it, but they're forced off the bomb. Forced by Magus. There's not enough time, even if Icy can clean up the rest of the straggling tees. Amcal will concede and he will die with the bomb to add insult to injury. So it's not Looks like they should be able to walk all over them. Peek up towards lane. Boros is instantly taken out, and Sun Pius, his second opportunity with the AWP, his second outing, yields very little success. It's all about survival of the fittest now, and they're running at him from either side. They can peak with the same timing, so even if one of them falls, there should be a quick trade. A little bit delayed, but Forrester gets it. And, that mean and they're hitting their shots. It's kind of the battle of the in-game leaders right now as well. And again, it's Nickelback that comes out of hit with two. Snatching the life away from Aegis and Sun Pius in the first few moments of the round. And now Madden, and desperately looking and seeking for his first kill, is going to be denied again. No, he actually does get it just beforehand. A bit of an awkward spray from the MP9. And now Snappy. Oh, those are crispy headshots. Keeping his team in this. You said the battle of the IGLs. Well, Snappy is trying to do everything by himself. Now, Puppet Master. Smoked out of position, has to try and rush through that smoke if he wants to try and deny this one, but decides actually he's going to bypass it. IQ, in-game IQ off the charts. He's going to be snatching around for another frag, looking for Icy, running out of ammunition, but he forces him off the side again and can go back in for a rego. It's going to be a full oh. defuse from Icy if he doesn't wide swing. Hence the re-peak from Icy. He knew what was coming up, but Snappy, that is such a solid effort. He needs someone to help him out, though. Oh. He wants to see if there's more players around. He wants to see if a rotation comes in and allow his teammates to move in first hand. And he may be given that. I see now come in. Snappy. Oh, he's seen both of them. Snappy. That is beautiful. Galaxy Brain plays from Snappy. But they need to make the most of this. 
the sheer genius of Snappy is giving them countless opportunities, but you have to close on them. And Forrester, he wants to piece together another round, upset the mastermind of Snappy and leave them with their heads in their hands. Time already ticking away though. Three versus three on this one, close towards Temple. A man pushing through Donut and Travis flanking back to CT. Snappy again picks up an impact frag, but it's slipping away. It's all on Madden, and he's going to be furious if this Brown gets snatched. Travis is on the bomb. He's flanking up, but he needs to find the frag. Spams in the smoke, but he gets it, Vince. It doesn't matter that Snappy's trying to win this single-handedly. He needs a team effort. Is this where the fortunes do start to turn around? Molotovs, flashes, smokes all being deployed. And more importantly, entry frags, Magus with two, and Boros following the call. If you can't get rallied behind an IGL that is popping off and making play after play, something has gone truly wrong. Travis in the meanwhile, though, gonna keep the dream alive of at least holding on to these two weapons. For Mass and M4, but the round is done. Falcons will be doubling up their grand total. And if they can end the half with four rounds, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Huge as well. That these three players stay alive. Keep their weapons in circulation. And for Majisk, it's two frags. That might just be the wake-up call back into this T side. Gust of wind could take them both down. And Forrester nipping at their heels, chasing them with the SMG. Some Pius on the off angle, repeaks, wanting to slice his way through him, but falls. All on Majisk with 5 HP, and the clutch won't happen. The MP9 pulls it off. Defuse comes through. A nail biter of a round. And Amcow build one step closer to the 10 rounds they are fighting for in this half. And it was all about that cave push. Crad getting two unanswered kills. Son Is there any more of a buffer that you can build, Falcons? Or will Amcal complete their hero's journey to 10? Madden, with confidence, change of pace. He's already creeping his way up into the bomb site. Icy gets revenge for what happened in the prior round, but Majisk has already found an opportunity to trade. Meanwhile, though, Forrester fires off some red hot shots and bodies both Majisk and Boros. He's still going. Forrester's aim is on fire right now, evaporating all the oncoming tees. And Sun Pius is not going to fare any better. Icy had the perfect angle, 10 to 2. In the Stow Jackie, you've got to keep believing. You win this pistol, you can bridge the gap to 10 5. At that point, it's possible. But they've been exploded outside. All five of Amcal picking up the pace, and Sun Pius can only muster up the strength for one. Too many targets to choose from. Target rich, but no money made for the CT so far. Costly. As Amcal, they've got an edge. They outnumber them, but Nickelback. The reaction to shoot, well, that comes through, but the adjustment to aim doesn't land. Majisk slices off the head, and we're down to a tight two versus two. A pistol round that has so much stock to it. If Amcal take this 2v2, the map is pretty much a done deal, and we head to Mirage. Snappy caught, but not punished. In actual fact, it's, I think, a bit of team damage done to Travis in the back from Forrester as they just try and rush down this plant. Oh, Snappy! That headshot! Insta to the face of Travis, putting Forrester into a one on two. We know his aim is up to scratch, but Snappy again, the hero the Falcons need. The hero they desperately require. And he will secure the second pistol round and give them a lifeline to play with. Sun Pius in the meanwhile, he wants to get some information outside of Temple. Forrester had no right to get that kill. Two players shooting at him. Just spins around on the turret, but Boris is now showing once again that he's a threat to be contended with. He's been a very quiet player so far on this map. Better late than never, but Kran is making the adjustments. May have caught the timing, but Snappy seems to have a good read of the situation. And we'll lay him to rest. Travis had B-side control, but the bomb was with the pack and it went down on the push. So there was no option to bail out and wrap back towards B, even with all of the information gathered. They had to.
It's not an ideal one though, but Snappy double flashed out. Has heard the footsteps of Nickelback on the right hand side. Comes in and gets the spray down. May not anticipate the second player though to be in the cubby. And it's a wild spray from Crad as he gets punished. The kill's coming through thick and fast, and it's all the way to Falcons. This was the pressure cook around. This was a chance to get themselves very close in terms of the deficit cutting down in half. And not only does it look like they're going to pass, but they're going to pass with flying colors. I see slain. Can't help but feel like maybe they just need to go for a tempo play. Fight for K, fight for ramp, peek off of each other. The utility set looks good for that kind of shenanigan. And they go running up the ramp. Madden, ready to defend, calls for the re-peak from Snappy as well, so they flank from either side and they spray their way through them. The only man that claps back is Icy. But one kill will amount to nothing as the round is Falcons. This mid-control has been a consistent factor. Tons of Molotovs down. And as far as they're getting singed to 80 HP, bypassing the cave, gonna go look into middle, and he does get one, but it's traded out briskly. Second kill comes out for Amcal, though, and they have the advantage. Sun Pius has seen the barrel of Icy's orb around the corner, but he knows the second player went to red. Meanwhile, Snappy comes through again. Two kills out of nowhere. It's always Snappy. Snappy is the beast for Falcons right now, and he sets up Boros to be the backstab to save it. A round that looked like Amcow had finally once again found the confidence they need. But who else but Snappy putting himself on 21 frags. Crad on the flank. He's about to be cut off. Boros is waiting. A single tap's all he need, but he gets bested. Crad clutches it into a 1v1. And with a minute left, Vince, it's all on this. How is Boros not able to get that kill? Sun Pius. Now has to do it all himself. The bomb was dropped down. Smoke has been put into position. The call may come through that this last player is low. Tech nine in hand. He's found Ooh. it, but Krad takes his head anyway. The immortal Krad clutching. And Amkal leap towards the finish line. Toying with the CTs in terms of the utility. They get the smokes out towards Red Room. Ooh, the Tech-9 though gets an entry and Icy finds another one. The pistols are starting to sing. Vince, is this how they get their 12th off the back of a big flank from Crad? Oh, he's waiting. He's lining up the perfect shot. Sun Pai is not sure where he's getting shot from right now and gets swept in. A perfectly timed flashbang and a Tech-9 insta headshot round the corner. Lack of utility. Aggression from some bias. Missing the shot though. And Icy doesn't bite down. He doesn't go for that flick shot. Well placed flashbang, but Forrest has already moved in. And the counter flashes are on point. HE's now in the rush as well. Some Pius is a dead man. He was trapped. Two opportunities to hit the shot, both of them fail. And they play together. The wolf pack overwhelms as they cut their way through him and claw their way close to a 13th round to an opportunity to fight on the third map and keep themselves in it. Falcons, with their backs up, have to defend. Snappy has been the king in this game for Falcons. He has been the one ruling with an iron fist at the bottom of ramp. He's got to deny them. Finds the flick onto the first, swings the scepter as he lines them up and takes down two. He's fighting for the strength of Falcons. And he's winning that fight, time and time again. Snappy goes down finally to the hands of Travis. And now he has to watch on. Agonizingly close to clutching this round. To keeping themselves in with a shot, but Travis is gonna neutralize Madden. And now may just cast the clutch to 1v2. What else can Snappy do? 26 kills, and they still lose the map. Ripped away. That's how you've got to approach it mentally. Completely disconnect from the first two maps, reset, and come in fresh. We're into the opening pistol round, then Amcow on the T side. Wolfpack bombardment, a split push towards the A side. Boros strikes first, Magis claims one as well. Forrester wins inside of Palace in his 1v1. But quite quickly, the entire T side team is being whittled away. Sun Pius. Opposite side of Murder Holt. And there are two players there. They do actually have a bit of a flank coming in with Snappy around the back of them on the A side. Last two remaining T, some smooth moves there for Travis. 
Crowd maybe trying to draw away some fire as he upgrades to the USP at range. Gonna have that one tap potential over the Glock. There's a flank coming in. A weakened Magus dropped to just three HP. But he gets the information they were looking for. And with Snappy making moves now down on towards the underpass, this may be a way forward for Falcon City to shut this round down. the move up towards the B site. Snappy's hearing all of this and some pious waiting with those Julies in a prime time position to punish. They peek on top of the van. Snappy firing off the warning shots, softening them up, making it easier for them to finish off the tees one by one. They bombard their way in. The Glock of Travis cannot deny the push. And Snap around where Amcal don't have too much to work with. A single pop flash to hope for the best. They go for their swing out on middle, but it is a shut case. Easy pick us for Falcons. Two player peek towards the window, but one is more than enough. Boros hits the head of Krad, brings them back to a 4v4. Snappy though, getting his hands dirty, charges through CT and lays claim to another pick up, but it's quite quickly gotten out of hand and it's all on Boros in a 1v1. I see. Cool as you like, because he swings with a Kalashnikov and lops the head off of Boros. And live that dream with the PGL Major. To have it ripped away would be soul crushing. And Madden, he delivers to at least buy them some time to play with. First couple of frags are found. The scout tags them up as well. And the flicks are looking good. St. Pius, maybe he doesn't need that orc, Vince. The scout works well enough really just trying to force one of these players on B away, and Travis catches Snappy. And as he changed his attention elsewhere, Boros can't make the most of it. There we go, finally gets his man, but he's gone through the bulk of his magazine. A weakened Forrester finished off. And Icy should be dispatched in the next few moments. Three players alive for Falcons, and that's good enough. 4-2 the score, and Amcal forced back into an eco. Going back many years. Meanwhile, Falcons. Oh, tons of damage up on the mid side. Spray is good from Boros, and they also neutralized Travis just beforehand up on top mid. Snappy round the back. There's the aggression that we saw time after time in the previous round with the MP9 throwing caution to the wind. Single-handedly trying to sell the idea that this is an A play, and they're kind of biting down on it. Problem is, though, Bomb's wrapped back. Nickelback's there with him. Oh, they're about to get crunched at middle as well. I see gets the pickup, though, Vince. What's going on here? It's a complete chaotic mess of a round, but somehow Amcal are getting success in this one. The clarity and chaos of Icy as he picks up a second, but will be neutralized by Majisk. He bypassed that early flashbang that got him onto Tetris. And as you said, he was really hard selling the idea that this is a fast A hit. It looked as though they could be dealt with from window and also from short being pushed in, but with the bomb down, it does put Amcal into a very awkward position. Deagle for Travis, M4 on the side of Crad, and they're gonna be split from one another. Would appear that maybe try and put in some Shenanigans through on the short side and get into con, allow Travis to pivot in with that deagle. Crad is very good at lurking, as we saw many times on Ancient, but the timing's not really going to afford him the luxury of playing cautiously at this stage. The shot from St. Pius may miss, but they have the backup plan of Magisk. As he shows his hand from Palace in the Molotov, although it went to Firebox, is not going to affect either of these players. Travis can get his hands back on the bomb again, but it's a fake. It's a ruse to try and get Sun Pius out of his position. So be careful what you wish for, Travis, because he's going to peak in a few moments, but not required. May just denies the bomb plant. And but in doing so, revving their engines is going to give their position away. That's exactly what happens. They hear the thud of players dropping to the deck and it's all into their coffins as Snappy snatches away the life of two. Forrester now springs into action. Icy spots himself Snappy and deals with him accordingly. Well-placed Molotov will buy up enough space and time for the post plant. Bomb down. Icy is peeking into it, but Forrester holds for the flank. It's the head of Madden. It's all on Majisk. 
Can he do it for Denmark in a spot like this? Drives his way out through the window. Icy's trying to shoulder peek into it. He's got an idea, a sneaking suspicion of both of the angles for these last two remaining tees. Sprints at the first, claims Forrester, but Icy keeps it going. Another frag, free to his name, and a round for the tees. Huge round for On the rafters. And he is watching the site by himself. Snappy goes aggressive, looking for information. It wasn't worth the cost of his life. But now Mata comes down. There's one kill with a 5-7. Nearly putting bullets together there for a second. A major shutting down Nickelback, who is completely unaware to his position in the smoke on staircase. We'll see Crad and Icy completely segregated with no control of really anything. Crad has the upper hand, maybe getting the timing peak on some players. Spots him and frags him. And that puts a very different spin on this round. The B site has been Amcal's domain. This is where they've won important rounds throughout this map already. The time is going to be so tight. 13 seconds on the clock. Icy has to instantly commit to the bomb plant and hope that he isn't swung upon. Boros cannot win his 1v1. Majisk is in the same position he was in last round. Will he repeat history or will he upset and change the books this time? Peaks towards the back of the bench. Damage done, but no frag. Crad holds 7 5. And it's this. Legacy brands like Dream Eaters. Oh, it's a waking nightmare as Forrester. He's Freddy Krueger on the pistol. And now Travis goes in for one of his own, putting him down into a slumber. Nickelback tucks him into bed. And that should be the pistol going with it. Snappy with the Glock against five. Icy will not allow him any reprieve at all. Seven, six, and Amcal, who have been forged through the fire and flames of majors and defeat and upset. And so far, Madden and Sun Pius have been bested, but so have Nickelback and Crad, and even 3v3, but in terms of firepower, it's anything but even. Snappy is not going to get spotted in that angle, but I think Travis heard him drop, adjusting his angle of aggression here. The other two teams are coming in. Snappy needed that headshot. It was a difficult one to land, but it puts a lot more pressure now on Magisk, and Boros is sneaking his way around the back. Magus could do well to fire off another couple of shots and keep these CTs interested, but they're going for the rotation and they're not going to expect this position, surely. Icy may go for the peak, though. He's going to wide swing in and does do his due diligence, dotting his eyes, crossing his T's and removing the head of Boros in the process. They may not know that Nickelback is here either, though. You'd expect two players on A side. But Icy may be able to sell this one away. Nickelback had so many options, but decided to go in for Madden. Pusplant comes in, but it's three kills back to back in favor of Amcal. Majisk in the meanwhile is caught between two separate angles and Sun Pius left alive on a measly 13 HP. Unlucky for some. And it's not looking like it's going to fare any better for him. Easy defuse in the end. And with a huge advantage into this round. And now Crad is going to witness them push through. Sun Pius with one. Nickelback caught between two separate players. He gets punished, and suddenly we're all even again. CT's going to get peached into, though, from Icy. And they don't have a smoke on Molotov to deal with this one. They're out in the open, but he whiffs his spray, and Mage just punishes him. Forrester out towards the bench. Madden peeks in. Wallbang connection. Reface from Majisk. It's two frags. But it might be the golden hour. Sun Pius, he's dawning. His third frag of the round needs the quad to close it, but he can't. Travis tackles him. Defuse comes in. Another clutch. Can they get any more from this? Where does the story go? Travis holding for the push. Majisk in position to strike on short. Oh, that's a money nade. Travis eats that. More than 50 HP disintegrates from the high ordinance, but it's icy. But once again, kicks open the round. Travis finalized by Boros. The HE now converts into the kill. And it's Magus that takes the initiative as Crad gets one from Tetris. And again, they're stuck between two angles, but this time they've dealt with it. This time they've dethunded it. But Icy comes straight back again. Trying to make this as difficult 
a task to get the post plant down as possible. And it's opened up area, room for Forrester to move into. 2v2 retake, and Forrester so nearly finishes off Snappy, but oh. HE should be money. Somehow doesn't kill Snappy, but there's Icy to pick up the pieces. He shattered them. He snapped them in two. Um, but he's trapped himself back inside of window. The last two in Madden and Magisk, they're making their move. And Icy again finds a sick shot. Snaps onto him. Forrester waits. And the flick's there. Denying entry and denying Falcons a way back into the game. Rampaging their way, stampeding Falcons out of this game. The elements battering them out of position, but the pistols are singing. Sun Pius has been a difference maker for Falcons throughout the series, and again now in the 20th, he hammers home. Big frags. You've opened up the site, and Amcal, they know the bigger picture about this one. Losing all three of these weapons would be catastrophic to the overall game. They give it up, Falcons will move to nine. You know, and kind of an interesting twist of fate here, Jackie. We almost have the opposite of what happened in the previous map. It was Falcons that had a vast lead. It was Falcons that looked like they were headed towards a 2-0. And then Amcal really picked it up and were able to punish Falcons for their mistakes. Maybe we're about to see the same outcome here, just in reverse. Travis holds on to his A1S. Double peek in, Icy punishes. You don't want to try this guy right now. Crad has got control of bottom ramp. He slipped into position, but Madden's looking for the face. He hits the head. 2v2. A sprint now for St. Pius. He's got to arrive on the bomb site and instantly commit to that plant. Travis is coming over towards CT, but his path will be blocked by the Molotov. St. Pius hoping that they don't peek through that Molotov to deny the bomb plant. That's exactly what's happened. And Madden was in no place to help. And although he's done a lot of damage to IC, they know the timing does not favor Madden. He cannot win this round. It is a done deal. And that means three elimination points for Falcons. But we have seen purchases of this low stature have success in the past. Icy already nullifying one player. Borosto is going around and taking heads left and right. And so this round will fall into a bit more sanity. Falcons will have an 11th. There can be no way forward for Nickelback. And so he decides to change up his avenue. It does mean that we are going the distance in this third map. Oh, damaged out through that fire. And so they have a good read of the situation. Oof. The timing on these firefights, it's down to the tiniest seconds of difference. Madden, meanwhile, wielding the AWP, walks in towards B and cracks open, slaying the AWP of Al Amcal. He's playing inside of the smoke. He dives his way out, fires off the no-scope, but it won't connect. Repeat back round towards the bench. Forrester hoping he can hold, and he will. Sands of time beginning to run a little bit dry. At some Pius attempting to reignite their prospects in the second OT round. I see using the pillars of Sanctuary as the smoke will plume. Affording him the luxury of re-peaking. This angle misses the shot. Uncharacteristic. Maybe Icy starting to feel the pressure just that little bit. The spray not there for Forrester. Nickelback finalized and Falcons right back into winning ways. To play an angle that supports his low health. Forrester. And he somehow make the unthinkable happen. Snappy's running straight into his arms. It's now down to the 1v1. Some Pius at least has the information at his disposal, AK additionally. The bomb is planted on the wrong side of the site though for Sun Pius. And Forrester has a smoke and a flash, comes round the corner and shuts Sun Pius down instantly. A 1v2 at such an integral moment in this game. And Snappy is going to be devastated that it never dawned on him that the Sun Pius doesn't clear it if he doesn't find the shot. 
Oh, Travis could behead the rotation and set them up for the play. Meanwhile, the back of B, it's on Snappy to win the round here. He lays down the law on the first. Icy is shattered in half. Nickelback breaks him. And with 15 seconds, they can plant the bomb and put themselves in a position to get 15. Mad and last man standing. The last hope, the last prayer of Falcons in this round. Going to be checking his angles. First spray is good and Nickelback is low. Nickelback on 43, still jumps up and gets the timing peak on Madden. Amcal with two more match points. Right now he's looking for another head. The timing on the peak towards Forrester though is the difference maker. As Majis catches him with the nade in his hands. Finds the pick, Nickelback replies back. The utility and AKs are singing. And Majisk has to go huge. He cannot. Smited by Icy's orb. He opened up the game and he seems to be the one that's going to close it. Falcons, their run towards Copenhagen is about to be ripped away from them unless Boros can save their chances. And up against these four players, it looks like his days are numbered. Falcons days numbered are the prospects of this major and Boris has been one tap down. The Falcons are eliminated.